we in our second topic of the subject geography and uh, in this topic we are going to look at the earth and the solar system previously we looked at introduction to geography so we'll just dive in into the topic so what are we going to learn what should we learn from this topic we are going to define the solar system explain the origin of the earth we're going to explain the effects of rotation and revolution of the earth and finally describe the structure of the earth take note of what is of much importance and so what's the solar system these are the group of heavenly bodies comprising the sun and the eight planets and what are the components of this solar system one we we've read from our definition back here the sun and the eight planets and so one should be the sun which is the center of the universe note that the sun is a star and a star is defined as a heavenly body possessing its own light which it transmits and so a cluster of group of stars is called a galaxy and so and the earth is in a galaxy called the milky way the planets these are large spherical celestial heavenly bodies in space characteristics they are spherical in shape they don't have their own light but reflect it from the sun they revolve around the sun in anti-clockwise direction they have their own force of gravity and only one is known to support life and that is the earth and we're going to list the planets that is mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn uranus and neptune earlier we had a, if you can recall we had a planet called pluto and so you can do your little research and know what happened to to pluto and finally to comprise the solar system we have other celestial bodies these are natural satellites minor planets comets meteorites meteors meteorites and the moon so it's important that you look at what these could be and uh, i'll assist you a little bit so a meteorite is a small heavenly body which strays from its orbit in the solar system and enters the earth's atmosphere at very high speed small heavenly bodies which stray from its orbit in the solar system and enters the earth's atmosphere at at very high speed that's kind of the summary of what i just said a meteorite remains of a meteoroid which have reached the earth's surface or incompletely burnt up meteorite and so a theory is a set of reasoned ideas intended to explain facts or events and so as we're going to mention a few theories these theories they are just reason ideas which try to explain how the earth came to be and one we have the passing star theory you can take some time and look at it we have the collision theory we have the nebula cloud theory and finally we have the explosion theory and so the shape of the earth is called geoid due to being an imperfect sphere by being wide at the equator and flat at the poles and here are some of the proofs that 
render evidence that the earth is spherical one if one moves around the earth in a straight line he will end up where he started number two satellite photographs taken from space show that the earth is like a sphere places in the east see the sun earlier than those in the west number four when a ship is approaching this is approaching the smoke is seen first then the mast and then Finally, the old ship. All planets are spherical, so the Earth being one of them is believed to be also spherical. 6. During the moon eclipse, the Earth casts a spherical shadow on the moon. 7. The Earth's horizon appears curved when observed from a very high point, like a tower. These are details on the size of the Earth. I'll give you a minute to look at it. You can pause the video if you are you, if you're making notes. These are details on the position of the earth in the solar system. And finally, we are going to look at the rotation and revolution of the earth and the effects. Then we are going to look at the structure of the earth. And so, rotation is the movement of the earth on its own axis. And the earth rotates through 360 degrees, taking 24 hours to complete one rotation. Rotates, the, the rotation is in an anticlockwise direction, that is from west to east. The effects of rotation of the earth creates day and night, causes deflection of winds and ocean currents in the northern hemisphere to the left and in the southern hemisphere to the right. What we mean by hemisphere is regions above the equator, hypothetically, and the southern hemisphere is regions below the equator. And so to expand on this is assuming you are in Kenya, you know that the equator passes through this country, uh, somehow splitting the country into half. And so the Mount Kenya is, lies along or around the equator. And so regions above, that is the likes of uh, Mandera the, in the Northern Hemisphere, and regions like Nairobi are in the southern hemisphere. Number four, number three, it causes rising and falling of ocean tides. Number four, it causes time difference between longitudes. And so there's an assignment for you. If you are you've logged, if you've sub subscribed or registered with our tuition facility, you will find the assignment posted there. But you can pause and try to Calculate the local time using the longitudes. The revolution of the earth. This is the movement of the earth in its orbit around the sun. It's in anticlockwise direction. And the earth takes 365 and a quarter days in a year to complete one revolution. Effects of the revolution of the earth causes the four seasons, summer, autumn, winter, and spring. Number two, causes variation of day and night's length due to the axe, earth's axis being inclined to the path of revolution at an angle of 60 degrees. Three causes changes in the altitude of the midday sun due to the Earth's orbit being elliptical. And finally, causes lunar eclipse due to revolution, bringing the Earth in line with the sun and the moon. Before we dive into the structure of the Earth, we would like to break. 
yes and this to remind you that this presentation is short this class session is short and you need to take some time to look at your notes or simply you can look at the geogra geography app available on the play store on your google play store uh, the big icon written inscribe geography that's how you'll know it's the right one on your google play store let's go back to our topic this is the structure of the earth so i'll give you a minute to or you can pause the video and try to copy it out so that you can discuss it this is the structure the atmosphere the hydrosphere, the lithosphere of the crust, the mantle, and the barysphere. So, the atmosphere is a layer of gases surrounding the earth. And the composition is gases, which, is, which exist as a mix, mixture. Smoke particles, dust particles, water vapor. The atmosphere is divided into four layers, namely the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and the thermosphere. What's the significance of the atmosphere? One, animals and plants breathe in from its oxygen for respiration. B, plants use carbon dioxide from it for photosynthesis. C. Water vapor in the atmosphere condenses to form clouds which give us rain. E. Carbon dioxide and methane in the atmosphere cause global warming through the, the greenhouse effect. And as you can see, that's a negative effect. The hydrosphere. This is a part of the earth's surface covered by water masses. These are the ocean, seas, lakes, rivers, even underground water a fun fact it comprises 73 percent of the earth's surface area the crust it's the outermost layer of the earth made of soil and other loose deposits of sand has two layers seal and sima we so far we've covered three of the five so let's proceed the mantle is the layer lying between the crust and the core made of iron and magnesium and has two layers the upper mantle and the lower mantle and finally the core this is the innermost or central layer of the earth also has two layers, the outer layer and the inner layer. Hope you've learned something. We can take a short break, then look at a quiz below. Yeah, so here's our quiz. Let's try answer it together. The first question is the definite zone of discontinuity between mantle and the core is called the um let me try this the A definite zone of discontinuity between the crust and the mantle is called I'll answer the short form of it. I hope it's correct. T 
tell me the comment section why is the interior of the art very hot due to radioactive decay causing most of the heating i think this is correct due to great pressure as a result of allowing crystal crystal materials true the original heat resulting from slow cooling of the materials which were pulled off the sun I think this is also correct. The crust has two layers. A theory is a set of reasoned ideas intended to explain facts or events. That's true. A dash is a heavenly body possessing its own light which it transmits. Let's see. Galaxy this we can recall is a cluster of stars and the sun is a star so i think the correct answer is star let's see how we perform hmm it is well done so let's review our responses the definite the definite zone of discontinuity between mantle and core is called the Gutenberg discontinu discontinuity. A definite zone of discontinuity between the crust and the mantle is called Mohorovic's discontinuity, shortly known as Mohorovic's we answered. So, why is the earth interior very hot? Our answer, our answer is correct. The crust has two layers. That's true. A theory is a set of reasoned ideas intended to explain facts or events. True. A star is a heavenly body possessing, possessing its own light which it transmits. That's correct. Thank you for joining us. See you in the next class. That is the weather.